Hi. I just want to talk for a second about the, uh, the myth of karmic causation, sometimes referred to as karmic causality. It's this idea that um, comes out of Eastern thought. Primarily, it's of importance to Hindus and Buddhists, also the Jains. Um, but the idea is that when, you, when a person does something good, they, they earn good in return from the universe. When they do something bad, they earn something bad. You could think of it as a kind of, there's this karmic metaphysical bank account that when you make a deposit, you know, the bank owes you something back in return. And if you make a withdrawal, then you're at a negative balance and you owe, you owe them, so you must repay. And I was just thinking about this because I was talking to someone I know who's a Hindu and about the idea of karma. And just, it's troubling to me, you know, when they say things like, um, there's, there's a reason for everything. And, um, you know, everything's ultimately justified because, because of karma, because of this idea of karma. You know, I thought of, you know, what about a, a child who gets cancer? And then he, he regretfully admitted that, you know, he said, people that have bad things happen to them, it must have, they must have earned it. You know, they must have done something. Because basically the universe can't just be random. I mean, that's, that's the way he sees it anyway. And I just had a really hard time dealing with that because, I mean, there are so many people out there who have injustices happen to them every day. And for us to just say, you know, they must have earned it. This is, um, this leads to the caste system in India, leads to the, uh, the poor, the idea that the poor are there for a reason. The untouchables are born into that caste because they must have done something awful in a previous life. And it really, um, it does a lot of harm. It causes a lot of, um, a lot of pain for many, many people. But I don't just want to talk about Hinduism in India, but um, this, this idea in general um, is part of a bigger picture. It, it's, it's important to the Hindus and the Buddhists, but not just to them, because um, Christians and Muslims and other people of other faiths also have their own version of it. And um, it goes back to something I mentioned in a previous video, which, which was that this idea of um, superstitious um, beliefs, the um, Superstition, as I'm defining it for the sake of what I'm talking about right now, is um, when you when a person confers um, power onto something, when they when they say there's um, this item or this thing or this person or this action that has a causal relationship that they are they're seeing to be there that isn't really justifiable for them to believe is there. For example, um, you do a good deed today and something good happens to you tomorrow, and you say you know, that was repaying your karma, or maybe that's repaying your karma from weeks or months ago, or a previous life. Those causal relationships aren't, it's not justifiable to say that, but it's a way of making the world make sense, right? And so, within Christianity, this is, um, this is why people blame hurricanes on gay people, right? Or they say, you know, Obama supports abortion, and that's why there are um, tornadoes in the Midwest. I mean, it's clearly not justified to say because of which president we elect that's going to affect the weather unless that president does something, you know, directly, for example, um, that affects climate change. And then you could say, well, you know, this, this president's negligence actually did affect the weather. But that's not what they're saying. They're saying it's, it's gay people or it's abortion or it's whatever. So these things do really have an impact. And I think so we should all just be really careful as far as um, where we are, if you're believing that something has a cause, make sure you have good reason for believing that it has the cause that it has. We tell our kids from the first time they ask us as babies, you know, we'll say, you know, mama, that's not fair, you know. My, my sister got this and I didn't get that. We didn't, everything isn't the same for everyone. We tell them, well, life isn't, life isn't fair. How many parents have not told that to their kid at some time in their life? We tell them that, but apparently we don't really believe it because we make up all of these systems that do their best to pretend as if, in the end, life really is fair. Another example would be something like, um, just to show why this doesn't really make sense, we can use lots of human examples. I mean, I could talk about something good I did a while ago and something good that happened to me today and try to draw a connection. We can all see how that doesn't make sense, but 
picture something like an animal out in the wild, you know, a baby gazelle, and the mama gazelle gets chased and eaten by a predator, you know, and the baby gazelle is just heartbroken and thinking, you know, what did we do to earn this? Like, this doesn't make any sense. Why me? How, how, did, how could this happen? And it's a reasonable question to ask in a way, but um, to actually think that the universe is trying to plan this out and punish you for, um, for your misdeeds or, or for your misdeeds in a previous life, when you think about it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, because why couldn't it just be, you know, nature doing what nature does? That's the obvious answer when we just look at it honestly and say, you know, how does nature function? Hunters go out, sometimes they catch something, sometimes they don't. When something gets caught, it's not because that prey animal was lacking virtue or had done something to earn it. They just, they were just unlucky or they were the slowest gazelle or they were whatever they were, but it's not their fault in any kind of meaningful way. And so uh, the reason this, um, I guess the reason this comes up so often is that we, um, we seek we seek justice, right? We want the universe to be just. We want the universe to balance the books. We want the universe to be fair and to, um, we want there to be an arbiter of truth and goodness. And, and uh, we want it all to make sense. And that's why we make up systems like karma or Christian um, punishment in heaven or hell, because we hate the idea that maybe we're just all alone in this world and it won't ever make sense, and no one's going to balance the books. And I said something similar like this to my Hindu friend, and he gave me this kind of blank stare, like, like what you're saying doesn't make any sense to me. Because what he'd grown up with all his life was, of course, the books have to balance. I mean, of course they have to balance. They have to balance. And to me, I, I don't see why they do. I don't think they do have to balance. And so... I'm not pretending to have all the answers, but um, I think we should be honest with ourselves and not just tell ourselves a story that we like. We should be willing to um, take the world for what it is, and um, whether we like it or not. Um, thank you for listening.